on my hands. I'm just knitting with it. What do I do? Is it going to bleed onto my sweater when I wash it? Today we're going to talk about what to do if this is your problem. Fiber Junkies, welcome back to The Color Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. If you're a brand new viewer, thank you so much for joining us and we really hope that you'll stick around and become part of our wonderful, funky, weird family called The Fiber Junkies. People who are obsessed with yarn and fiber and love to talk about it and meet other people who are obsessed with it as well. If you're a returning Fiber Junkie, thank you so much for coming back. I'm so happy that you are here and I'm really excited to share today's topic with you. Today we are going to be continuing to discuss what happens when color is coming off of your yarn. Last week we talked about what to do if you have bleeding yarn or color transfer color um, in your rinse water, what you can do to avoid that. Um, today we're going to be talking about what happens when the color is actually coming off on your hands as you craft. This is actually something that freaks so many people out. It's totally understandable. It's a scary, scary thing. The first time it happened to me, I almost had a heart attack and I was so scared to finish my project and block it because I was terrified that all of the, the yarn color was gonna bleed into other sections of my project. And it was, it was terrifying, it was horrible. So today we're gonna talk about what causes it, what you can do to avoid it, and how to just take a deep breath and realize it's not the end of the world. Okay, so one thing I want to go over that I forgot to mention in last week's video is that when you are uh, rinsing your color, if you're worried about color releasing at all, or if you're, you washed your swatch and your color is releasing some water into the, or some dye into the rinse water and it's getting a tint, like if you're washing a purple yarn and it's coming out kind of a lavender tint, one thing you can do is put a color catcher sheet in all of your um, wash water or your blocking water with your finished object. You can find those at most um, grocery stores or like Target and places like that or on Amazon I believe has them. They're just color catcher sheets. You can put them in your washing machine as well and a lot of people have them already on their laundry shelf for washing like when you get a brand new pair of jeans a lot of times that indigo color can come out on your legs or in your wash water and so a lot of people will throw in a color catcher sheet with a brand new pair of jeans or something like that just to ensure it doesn't turn their other colors kind of funky. That's a really great thing you can use with hand washing your hand knits as well, so I highly recommend looking into that option. Gives you that extra insurance so you just don't have to stress about it. You can also buy big packs of them on Amazon, I think, and if you want to have several on hand um, and save yourself a little bit of money, if you buy in bulk, I think you can get more of them for less. Okay, so let's talk about dry crocking. So here I want to be very, very careful uh, with my terminology. I have actually gotten um, chastised online for talking about crocking. Uh, because some people do say that crocking isn't actually the process of it just coming off on your hands while you're knitting. That's something else, and I forget what the exact explanation is. But I have heard several people talk about dry crocking being um, when any kind of fabric that has been dyed or colored is releasing color onto your skin as you wear it or work with it. So whether you're knitting or like that brand new pair of jeans and you take them off at the end of the night and you've got little like a blue tinge to your skin, right? <laughs> We've all had that happen at some point. Um, that's called dry crocking. Um, if I'm wrong on that technical term, please don't yell at me because I, I did research this and I found a lot of people had a consensus on the dry crocking. A few people still disagreed with it, but that's what we're gonna call it here today. But know that that's what we're talking about when you're wearing your brand new jeans or you're working with yarns as you knit or crochet and some color is coming off on your skin. So what causes that and what can we do about it? To understand this we have to go over a little bit of hair anatomy. If you watched last week's video on color releasing in your rinse water, we already went over this. We're going to do an even briefer quick session today. But here is a hair shaft anatomy. Hair shaft is just what we think of as hair. It's what comes out of your head that you run a brush through or you can braid and put up or whatever. The hair strand is made up of three layers, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. The medulla is the blue line in the middle, that's that middle section. We don't really need to deal with that because that doesn't really affect us. The cuticle is that outer layer that's represented by the fuchsia. That's the part that when you felt non-superwash wools, you get hot water and agitation and you rough it up. And the scales that make up the um, cuticle that overlap are going to uh, enmesh and create that pad that we call felted fabric. Evie, please stay off of that. 
The cortex is the middle layer, which is where the dyes go to live so that they can permanently change the color of your yarn. Sometimes when there is too much dye, think of it like a glass of water and you're filling it up with a pitcher of water, right? And when you get to the top of the glass, it's at capacity. And if you keep pouring, it's gonna overflow the sides. Same thing can happen with dye in the hair strand. You can put too much dye molecules on your yarn and it'll get filled up and it can't accept anymore. And so then those extra molecules will just sit on top like those little brown dots that I drew at the top. They won't have anywhere to go except sit on the top and that can come off on your hands or in your rinse water. Also some color molecules are just too large to fit all the way down into the cortex or especially if there's already quite a few of them. So they can sometimes sit partially or fully on top of the hair shaft as well. Now usually if there's anything on the top, that gets taken care of in the uh, rinsing process after your dyer has set the yarn. However, it is possible for some of them to be extra sticky and stubborn and to not get completely off of there. And I want to stress that this is not an indie dyed yarn problem only. This is a dyed fabric problem across the board, whether that's in a factory, the jeans made in a factory, your sweater that was made in a factory, your um, commercially dyed yarn, your big box company, your big name indie dyers that have made it big and are beyond a cottage industry now, and your tiny little hand dyer on Etsy that just started two weeks ago, right? This is a problem for all of us. It's not just an indie dyed problem. It's just the nature of dye molecules and hair shaft. And when you put those two together, sometimes things happen. Now, we're all human, so even big companies and small indie dyers can have mistakes and things can slip through the cracks. But more often than not, there is science behind why that's happening. Like, Sometimes they're extra sticky and on our end, it looks like it's totally fine and the water's rinsing clear, but then you can get it on your end and it can come off. The biggest factor for that is the pH of your water and that can cause the releasing. If your pH isn't the same as your dyers, it can cause the releasing of those color molecules into your rinse water. So guess what? That means it can also cause releasing onto your skin when the pH of your skin isn't at a neutral level. For the dye molecules to remain where they are and not come off at all, 100% guarantee it has to be at a pH neutral level. If your skin is not at that level, it can cause that to come off, especially when you're knitting or crocheting because that yarn is running over your hands, causing friction, constant motion, right? So I like to tension my yarn when I knit. I have kind of this weird wonky like, it's a version of throwing, basically, or English style. So I tension the yarn usually in my right hand. I do knit continental occasionally, but I'm not as good at it yet, especially with lace and stuff, so I'm still working on that. But when I tension with my right hand, I like to have the yarn tensioned around my middle finger here, and it wraps around, and it just kind of slides through as I go, and then I flick it um, with my finger, I flick it over the needle. Um, so it's a throwing motion, but it's a lot faster and quicker and smaller of a motion than like pulling the yarn with my whole hand. I just flick my finger. So anyways, that uh, wraps around my finger, and so as I'm knitting, it slips through, and so when this has happened to me before, it almost always is on that middle finger, or this finger, or both, um, because it's, it's sliding over these fingers repeatedly, and so I will see like a little snaky line of green if I'm knitting this color, or, or gold if I'm knitting with a gold, or whatever, that's um, going, and, and it just looks like a little strand of yarn around my finger. <laughs> Um, I've also had this happen um, when I'm knitting continental or color work over on this hand as well. It usually isn't all over your hands, it's just a little bit on your fingers that are touching the yarn the most and especially where there's a lot of that friction. So there are many, many, many things that can cause the pH of your skin to be different. It could just be that your skin is different, um, but more often than not there is a factor going on with how your body is in the moment. Now, many of you guys know that I'm a hairstylist, so when I'm not dyeing yarn, I'm working behind the chair dyeing hair, and I have been a stylist for 13 years and worked behind the chair, seen a lot and a lot, a lot of stuff. And one of the crazy things is I can have regular clients that I've been seeing for 10 years come in and we're doing the same formula for at least two years or more on their hair color, right? And every time it comes out exactly the same, and then they come in, we do everything the same. Everything looks the same, seems the same. They don't have any... Um, they don't want to change anything. I don't change anything on my end. Use the same color exactly and it'll turn out differently. When that happens, that usually triggers me to know that either something in their health has changed or they're in a different um, phase of their life. So 
your body goes through changes all the time. In fact, every seven years, your hair is going to go through a change. And usually it's subtle enough you don't see a big change, but it can actually change. And it can be, if you've ever noticed that, you know, maybe you had curly hair growing up and then all of a sudden, you know, at 24 years old, suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, my, my hair is like, kind of not as curly it's kind of limp and it's starting to get straighter um that does happen and it's every seven years your hair goes through a change perhaps your hair has been slowly getting straighter and just all of a sudden you notice it sometimes it can be a big change um sometimes your hair can suddenly start to come in white or gray suddenly it can suddenly start to come in frizzier suddenly it can change and start to get a lot thinner um your hair is always going through changes again they're usually pretty subtle you don't notice them but every seven years it turns over and changes and it's almost like you have new hair. That's crazy. So if that's just happening with your hair, it can happen with your body too. And your body is a holistic organ, so anything going on can affect other things. I've had people that had like a broken bone, shouldn't have affected their hair, but whatever stress that was going on with their body when they broke it can sometimes affect their hair. Um, I've had color people that um, come in and they're like, my hair is just much more unmanageable all of a sudden. And it's unmanageable for a couple weeks and then it calms down and it goes back to normal. And it turns out that they, they were sick and their hair got unmanageable because they had the flu or they had mono or whatever it was. Um, and then when they get healthier and things calm down and it gets better, it's, it's easier to work with again. Um, this is especially true of hormonal changes. So if you're going through any big hormonal changes like pregnancy, um, childbirth, menopause, um, any of those things. And guess what? Yes, that means your monthly cycle, ladies. So if you are going through different phases of your monthly cycle, your body changes throughout your cycle. And so it's not the same from week to week within your menstrual cycle. Even if you are um, not getting pregnant, even if you're on the pill, even, even all of these things, you're still gonna have some hormonal fluctuations that can cause things to change. So um, if you're changing your birth control too, that's another big hormonal shift and change around in your body from different birth control methods that can cause the pH of your skin and hair to get off. So now that we know all of that, can we just take a deep breath and maybe not send that angry email yelling at our dyer that um, they ruined your project or because it's coming off on your hands? Not saying that you're gonna do that, but if that was your instinct, maybe just take a deep breath and realize it's quite likely nothing that your dyer did. It's nothing on their end. In fact, I'm pretty sure that with dry crocking, that is something totally different than rinsing. Just because it comes off in your hands does not mean that it's going to come off in the water. Just because it comes off a little bit in the water doesn't mean it's going to bleed. Go back and watch my video on rinsing and bleeding yarns from last week. But this isn't something that your dyer did. Most likely it is something about the pH of your skin or your water. It is something to do with your body's chemistry related to the dye molecules, okay? So now that we know that it's not your fault, not your dyer's fault, nobody's fault, we can stop playing the blame game and we can just say, ah, oh, science, you weirdo. This is what happens sometimes. What can we do to avoid that? Well, first thing is you can't totally avoid it, but if it's starting to come off on your hands and it really, really bothers you, you can put that project aside, and for those of you that are super monogamous knitters, this is gonna drive you insane. You can put that project aside, try working with something else because not all yarns will, will do that at the same time. I've had times where one yarn was cracking on my fingers and I was like, oh, it must be that time of the month or it must be like something in my health or my pH is off in my skin for whatever reason. And so I put it down and tried knitting with something else didn't come off on my hands, it was fine. Um, so not all yarns are gonna do that. So just try switching projects and come back to it a few days or a week later and you may not have the same issue. Um, but you may just have the same issue. You can just stop knitting with that yarn and gift it away, but who wants to do that? Especially when it's probably something that's mi minimal and probably not gonna come off in your wash water. Cracking on my fingers, dry cracking on my hands has happened to me at least twice, maybe three times um, and the latest time was about a year ago, and it was with one of my yarns that I hand dyed, actually. And uh, I was a little worried about it, because I was like, I know it's fine, because I've had this happen before, um, I, but I hadn't looked into all the science behind it yet, so I didn't know about things like skin's pH and your menstrual cycle changing it, and I hadn't made that connection in my brain, which I should have, knowing how it affects your hair, and even your skin, like I wax eyebrows and things, and all of those things affect your skin when you're getting waxed. So I should have thought of that. Um, oh yeah, medications that you're on is another big one. Even vitamins can change that, so keep that in mind. Um, but I, I hadn't thought through all of that yet, and so I was worried, and, and that's what prompted me to go do the research because I was like, I just wanna know what I can say if this happens to any of my customers because I know on my end that I did everything right with this yarn as far as setting it, rinsing it, it looked great, everything was fine, it shouldn't be doing this. And um, so I learned a lot from that experience, but here's the great thing. 
in all of the two, maybe three times this has happened to me, I have never, ever had a yarn that came off on my fingers while I was knitting, dry cracking, that when I went to rinse it, it bled on my project. And when I talk about bleeding yarn, I'm talking about not just like a, a tiny little tint in the water, I'm talking about the, the water has a lot of dye in it and or the color transfers from one part of your yarn to another part. So if you have like a stripe of white and then a stripe of blue, the blue bleeds into and splotches across the white. I've never had that happen from dry crocking, ever. So it's highly unlikely that that is going to happen. Again, this would be a really good point if you're knitting and that starts to happen and you didn't knit a swatch, go back and knit a swatch really quickly and wash your tiny, it can be a tiny little one because you're just washing it, wash your swatch and see what happens. And if it's if you're making um, like stripes or any kind of color work where you have multiple colors going on, make sure that you use a couple different colors and then wash that so you make sure it doesn't bleed. More likely than not, it is not going to do anything to your finished object. Your swatch is gonna come out perfect and then you have that peace of mind and you can know, okay, it's just on my fingers, it'll be fine. I promise you it's not gonna fade every time you wash it. It's just something that happens. And it's just those sticky little dye molecules sticking to the top, coming off, reacting with the pH of your skin. Okay, so let's talk about how you can get it off your hands, right? Because we don't really wanna go around with color on our hands. I do all the time because between dyeing hair, dyeing yarn, and I'm a mixed media painter who likes to paint with her fingers. Um, I use inks and paints a lot in my artwork. I used to sell my artwork and now I don't have time for that anymore with the yarn, but I still do it as a hobby. And so between those three things, I always have color of some kind on my hands. So I'm fine with it and I've just learned to live with it, but most people don't wanna go around with blue all over their fingers, right? So how can you get it off? Personally, I have had great success with rubbing alcohol and a cotton ball. And I just put that on there, scrub it on a little bit, and wash it really, really well, and it usually comes right off. Um, if that's not working for you, another idea that I read about online from another indie dyer who has a blog, um, and I apologize, I cannot remember her name right now, but um, another indie dyer that I saw online had mentioned that she used the cheap mold and mildew remover and um, I think it, you can get it like at hardware stores or um, like in the cleaning aisles of most bigger stores that have that kind of stuff. Just the cheap mold or mildew remover for like mold and mildew around your bathroom tiles. You can put some of that on your hands and wash it off really well and she says that works wonders. I haven't tried it so I can't guarantee that it'll work but she says it works great. I believe her, she's very knowledgeable and has had a lot of experience. So I would go and test that one out if the rubbing alcohol isn't working for you. Um, the other thing to know is that it will fade off of your hands. If you don't have either of those options or neither of those are working for you, just wash your hands with hot water a lot and soap and um, it will fade within a few days. It'll go away. Um, same thing with hair color, by the way. If your hairstylist gets a little bit of um, hair color around your hairline or on your fingers, if you like reach up and scratch while you're process your while your hair color is processing it will just come off of your fingers now that one doesn't work with um, the rubbing alcohol you can sometimes get a little bit of it off but I haven't had a really great um, experience with permanent hair color coming off that way but it's worth a try but usually it'll come off within a couple days so don't don't sweat it it's not that big of a deal okay so now that we know what you can do to get it off of your hands and what you can do and know that it's not really something that you can do to avoid it, um, please make sure that you are following all of the instructions in my last video or in my how to block video for washing and blocking your yarn as far as the rinse water. You want to make sure, basically the Cliff Notes version is, you want to make sure that you do not have hot water ever, ever, because that will open the cuticle and release dye molecules um, and it can damage your yarn. You want to make sure you're always using cold water. You want to make sure that you're using unscented wool wash or unscented extra gentle laundry detergent or baby shampoo. If you're using laundry detergent or baby shampoo, you must rinse, which is why I like unscented wool wash because you don't need to rinse and it protects the, um, the structure of the fiber. It's made specifically for wool, so it works very, very well with wool and wool blends and is very, very gentle. Um, you want to make sure that you are not agitating a whole lot in your in your uh, rinse water and you don't want to let it soak ever, ever, ever. Don't let it soak for a long period of time. Max is 20 minutes and that's only for extra dirty garments. I would say most garments you could just swirl it around for two to three minutes and you're golden. Okay, so if you follow all of those, you shouldn't have to worry too much about that coming off on your hands. 
And um, please let me know what you think about this video. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you want to get notified every time there's a new video, which why wouldn't you when there's all this great information, go ahead and hit that bell as well because when you just subscribe, it doesn't necessarily send you the notifications of new videos. So hit that bell so that you will get a notification every time I release a new video. Thank you guys so much for being here. It is now time to cast off. Love you.